All right. It's no secret that the protection warrior is seen as a bit of a meme in the eyes of the community, but truth be told, it's in a much better state than people may think, and unless you're in a guild looking to clear raids on release day, there is little reason to omit a protection warrior from your roster. In an ideal roster, you'll be taking the role of an off-tank, which you'll be well suited for due to the rework of Vigilance. But your toolkit is also the strongest in the game for ad tanking and kiting due to your insane mobility and shockwave. Not actively tanking will also allow you to increase the rate's damage by swapping into battle stance to use Shatter and Throw. However, some protection warriors will seem like they're made out of paper, while others will make you question the rankings in the tanking tier list. The aim of this video is to turn you into the latter. In this video, we'll be going over your stat priority, talents and glyphs, rotation, professions, race, weak Rs and macros, and some other aspects of the class to keep in mind. This guide is made assuming you have a base level understanding of the class, and will gloss over the most basic information to focus on how to optimize your gameplay. And with that, here is your Cataclysm Guide to the Protection Warrior. Before taking a look at stat priority, it's worth taking a brief moment to talk about combat table coverage, otherwise known as CTC. CTC, in essence, is the total sum of all of your block, parry, dodge, and the boss's chance to miss. The way that incoming attacks work is not simply rolling the chance of each of these chances individually, but without getting too technical, it means that if your CTC adds up to 102.4%, then the maximum amount of damage you can take from a hit is 69%, assuming you don't dodge or parry. The unfortunate thing for block tanks, however, is that this number cannot be reached until we get to Firelands as we're playing on the 4.3.4 tuning where mastery values were nerfed, so that slightly affects how we gear throughout the phases. For progression, our stat priority will look like this. Stamina, over mastery, over parry, over dodge, over strength, over hit, over expertise. Let's talk a little bit about why. The old Cataclysm philosophy was to prioritize mastery overall, but that is no longer the case. Stamina has the benefit of giving you the safety net of tanking bigger burst damage, and it's the only stat that has any value against magical damage. And with the way that Vengeance work, it has about half of the offensive value of strength, making it an all-around excellent stat. Mastery is still by far your best secondary stat, as it's per point the most efficient way to reach complete CTC. After reaching a CTC cap, however, its effect become halved as you only gain benefit from the critical block portion of Mastery. The primary reason Mastery is so strong is because it does not get affected by diminishing returns, unlike Dodge and Parry. Speaking of Dodge and Parry, we generally want to keep their values equal on tanks as to get the most benefit from both respectively. However, it's absolutely fine to have slightly more Parry to benefit from the whole aligned talent. That being said, since strength gives parry, you're likely to still be itemizing for dodge over parry. In previous expansions, you'd want to have hit and soft expertise cap to help with threats and to reduce the chance of parry hasting the boss, but this is not the case in Cataclysm anymore. With a 500% threat modifier, you'd need to be incredibly unlucky to ever have issues with aggro, and parry haste is not a thing for bosses in Cataclysm. Unlike the Blood Death Knight and Feral Druid who gain active mitigation from offensive attacks, the Protection Warrior doesn't have anything equivalent, making it even less desirable. That being said, I think completely disregarding offensive stats like hit and expertise is not the right way to play the game. Tanks do competitive damage in Cataclysm, and a prompt warrior playing correctly can often find themselves out DPSing some people in the raid. Once you feel comfortable with your survivability, I would look into picking up a bit more hit and expertise, especially if you're in a speedrunning environment. There are generally three builds that we'll see play in Cataclysm. Let's first go over your bread and butter build that you'll use for 90% of the content, and then the other two builds that we'll see situational use, but are important nonetheless. Here are the talents you take for your standard build, but let me quickly go over why we make some of the choices we do. Insight is a very strong damage amplifier for a heroic strike, which we'll be using pretty much off cooldown when tanking more difficult content. Blood and Thunder is our strongest AoE talent, allowing us to spread rend with Thunderclap, but even on a single target encounter, it'll be worth the points due to the rend refresh. Shield Specialization offers marginal utility as it has a 1.5 second internal cooldown, and very few encounters allow for rage to be generated through Spell Reflect. That being said, we still pick up one point, as it's better than the alternatives. Shield Mastery now also makes Shield Block into a decent mitigation tool against magical damage. 
which is something worth keeping in mind on fights like Conclave and Sinestra, where you want to rotate damage reduction cooldowns. The point in last stand is honestly optional, as in 90% of circumstances, you'll be using your cooldown on Rallying Cry, as they share cooldown for some reason. It does come with the benefit of 10% extra health over Rallying Cry and double the duration, so if you will not be utilizing Rallying Cry for the raid, it's definitely worth the one point. We have to skip impending victory as it can only proc on targets below 20% HP, and the healing value is rather pitiful. Safeguard is a very strong talent, but offers limited utility if you're tanking the target and thus should be skipped in your bread and butter build, but we'll come back to this talent a little bit later. With the rest of our points, we go into the arm street to pick up field dressing and deep wounds as the most impactful options. 6% increased healing received is huge, and Deep Wounds is on average a 4% damage increase and can proc from AoE abilities like Thunderclap and Shockwave. Our second build is a Piercing Howl build, which goes deeper down the Fury Tree while sacrificing Deep Wounds from the Arms Tree. This build is slightly worse offensively, but on par defensively with the standard build. Piercing Howl will be very useful on fights with adds where you want to slow, especially if you're in a 10-man setting and have a limited supply of traps and earthbinds and need to provide the slow yourself. Blood Crates also does a decent amount of healing when fighting many mobs, offering far more value than Battle Trance. We also pick up 3 out of 3 in Shield Specialization as War Academy offers a very small offensive gain and is generally not worth the points unless needed to go further down the arms tree. The last build is a Safeguard build, where you drop 1 point in Cruelty and 1 point in Seal Specialization to pick up 2 out of 2 in Safeguard. Intervene with Safeguard is one of the strongest offensives in the game when used right. With a 6 second duration and a 30 second cooldown, you can theoretically have 20% uptime of this buff on the main tank, which is huge, but ideally you want to use it as an external cooldown for big hitting abilities. While it does have slightly shorter duration than other external cooldowns, the way we use tank cooldowns in Cataclysm is to counter big tank busters, which generally happen over a short period of time. Thus, additional duration to our cooldowns generally provide limited value, making Safeguard, in my opinion, the strongest offensive external tank cooldown in the game. The problem is, however, that we'll ideally want to run with an arms offspec for single tank encounters, and as such, you'll need to head back to town to respec on a boss by boss basis during progression. And that brings us to the glyphs. For our prime glyphs, there's not much to talk about, you'll run glyph of shield slam, revenge, and devastate for all content in the game. For our major glyphs, there's a bit more flexibility depending on what kind of content you're doing. Glyph of Shockwave and Resonating Power are generally in slot options, as they benefit us both in AoE and single target encounters. And in a situation where you use Cleave, Glyph of Cleaving will be your best choice. And in a situation where you'll benefit from extra range on Thunderclap and Piercing Howl, like Conclave and Meloriac, then running Glyph of Thunderclap and Piercing Howl will be great options. There are situations where you may consider running Glyph of Shield Wall as well, increasing your damage mitigation from that spell from 40 to 60% at the cost of a 2 minute increased cooldown. There are many fights where you will only utilize one Shield Wall and then this Glyph will offer a lot of value. Generally, however, we benefit more from having more frequent responses to big incoming damage rather than one big cooldown. For minor glyphs, we insta-lock Demoralizing Shout and Berserker Rage for reasons we'll talk about in the rotation part of this video. For the last option, we can either go for a battle or a command, but generally we'll be buffing it with Battle Shout, and thus that will be our glyph option as well. Now it's time to talk about how to actually play this spec, and in my opinion, the Protection Warrior has some of the most dynamic and rewarding rotations, with someone playing optimally providing far more value to the raid than someone who doesn't. Your most optimal opener will look like this. Start in Battle Stance, then 6 seconds before the pull, use the following opener sequence. Retaliation, unless you'll be AoE tanking during the fight, then Battle Shout and Berserker Rage to get to 25 Rage, Strength Potion, Shattering Throw, Defensive Stance, Charge. Then Shield Block, Shield Slam, Revenge if procced, Rend, then stack Sunder Armor to 3 if you don't have a Feral Druid on the target, if you do, then use Demo Shout and Thunderclap if you don't have a Blood DK on the target, if you do, then go into your normal rotation. Rotation is the word we use to describe the way we press our spells, but pretty much like all other classes, 
we have a priority based system with conditional alterations to the system and it looks like this. Shield slam whenever off cooldown and try to shield block right as shield slam comes off cooldown. Then we prioritize revenge, rend which we refresh with thunderclap, then heroic strike if we have an inside proc, then concussion blow and shockwave unless shield block is up, then devastate. Heroic Strike doesn't share a global cooldown with the rest of your spells, so it should be used whenever you're over 50 rage, independent of whether or not you have a higher priority spell of cooldown, as they can be cast at the same time. The reason why we don't use Concussion Blow or Shockwave during Shield Block is that we prefer to use Devastate to potentially reset the cooldown of Shield Slam during the Shield Block window. Of course, we prioritize refreshing Demoralizing Roar and Battle Shout over filling with Devastate if buffs are not brought by other classes. Your Battle Shout can also be used to gain Rage if you are Rage Starved. There are other fancy things we can do to improve our DPS marginally if done right, like Stance Dancing to Colossus Smash before a Shield Block and Shield Slam window. But unless done right, it will generally be a DPS loss. Further, when you're not CTC capped, you also run the risk of getting crit while leaving defensive stance. And thus, you should only stance dance when you're actively not tanking, but still high on vengeance. If you want to weave Colossus Smashes into your rotation, then swap 1 point in Cruelty for 1 point in Tactical Mastery. Our base professions will be slightly different depending on where you find yourself in the expansion, as well as how sweaty you want to be with min-maxing. For the whole expansion, engineering will be your best option due to Nitro Boost. But adding Sinem Springs, Bombs and Sappers, and a perfectly sided 359 helmet that won't be replaced until you get a heroic raid replacement makes engineering a far better option than the alternatives. For our second profession, you'll want to run with Alchemy for the lifebound Alchemist Stone until we get both of our stamina trinkets from raids. After that, and for the rest of the expansion, Leatherworking will be our best profession as it will provide us with a bonus of 155 stamina compared to the 120 stamina of other professions. The benefit is marginal, so feel free to run with what you please as long as it's not tailoring or a gathering profession. And by the time that Dragon Soul comes around, blacksmithing will be essentially equivalent to Leatherworking. While I don't think that any race is worth rerolling for or to spend your hard earned money to race transfer to, there are definite benefits to being one race over another. Let's start with Horde. Defensively, there are really no good options for Hordes and Cataclysm. Tauren has a small health increase to base health, which doesn't scale with Vengeance. Or Control has small offensive gains, and the mobility of Goblin doesn't bring a lot of utility to a class already stacked with mobility. That being said, I still think Goblin is the best option as the rocket jump can come in clutch and the 1% haste increase gives decent offensive value. Blood Elf will of course be the best raise once we get Mythic Plus Dungeons. On the Alliance side, our options are looking a lot better. Your best raise will be Night Elf due to Quickness Racial giving you 2% more avoidance which is counted towards your CTC coverage. This is huge, but if you prefer to play Dwarf, that is absolutely fine as well since Stone Skin is now a solid defensive cooldown and a lot of our best options will be maces in this expansion. There are quite a few Weakars which will allow us to be better as tanks and players in general. I will link to all the ones that I use in the description below. Having a Vengeance Tracker will be very important in order to properly be able to offload the big hitting abilities at the right time and to avoid popping recklessness or stance dancing for Colossus Smash with low vengeance. I think it's important to use a bar rather than a numerical value and to have it close to the center of your screen in order to track it through your peripheral vision. Have a class Weegara that brings all of the important information to the center of the screen for proper rage and cooldown tracking. Have a tracker for tank debuffs as you want to make sure that 10% damage decrease and 20% attack speed decrease is on the target at all times. Having an insight proc weak aura will be important too, so you know how much of a priority your next heroic strike should be when you don't have excess rage. In a raid setting, you should make sure to have a weak aura that shows you the name of the target on your nameplate, especially if you don't have altering colors on your nameplate depending on threat. Macro wise for the protection warrior, you'll absolutely get by playing macro free. But if you want to use an optimal opener and weaving colossal smashes, there are quite a few that we need to get set up. First, a macro for everyone. Make sure to have a mouse over intervene macro. 
Regardless of if you're playing Safeguard or not, it'll make life a lot easier when using Intervene for mobility. Second, use a Charge macro that puts you in defensive stance. This will make life a lot easier when using Shattering Throw in your opener. Third, have a Battle Stance into Colossal Smash macro and then a Defensive Stance into Shield Block macro if you're looking to Colossal Smash Weave in your rotation. In this last section, I want to rapidly go over some of the things that will be important to keep in mind. First is consumables. Run with Stamina Flask, and we use Mastery Food for progression and Strength Food for farm. Don't be the guy that eats Feast, which gives you Stamina and Dodge. We use Strength Potions generally, but you can change your second pot to an Armor Pot if the fight calls for it. But always pre-pot with Strength. For our gems, we generally run with 60 stamina and only opt to pick up socket bonuses if we don't lose stamina by doing so. Then go for mastery and stamina in green slots and parry and stamina in purple slots. We use the eternal shadow spirit diamond for our meta slot. For our weapon enchant, we use windwalk, but if you don't want to drop 10k on a weapon enchant, avalanche and hurricane are roughly equivalent, with pyrium weapon chain not too far behind. Lastly, please make sure to track your external raid cooldowns. As Protection Warrior, you have a rather limited defensive toolkit, and as such, being able to call for external cooldowns, especially outside of shield block windows, will be very important. Give your teammates some time to react to the call and call their name before asking for a cooldown. Chances are, if you say Pain Suppression Me, you'll either get two at once or zero if they don't know who quote unquote me is. If you've stuck around till the end, I want to thank you so much for watching. The Protection Warrior is incredibly fun to play in Cataclysm and will be very valuable as we approach Dragon Soul. And hey, who knows, perhaps we'll get the Feral Druid and Red treatments at some point during the expansion. Plenty of more tank content is to come. The Bloody K Guide is already out with the Feral Druid and Prot Paladin Guide on the way. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.